The Adam Smith Awards are globally recognized as the industry benchmark for best practice and innovation in corporate treasury. Throughout this dedicated series, we take a deep dive into each of the winning solutions of 2021 in conversation with the creators themselves. Hello, I'm Sophie Jackson, Joint Publisher and Head of Strategic Content at the Treasury Today Group. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the winner and the two highly commended winners of the Best Foreign Exchange Solution category. This category looks at foreign exchange and solutions corporates are deploying to tackle the continuing challenges of currency volatility. From technology to new processes, change to a hedging strategy or a new FX requirement as a result of entering a new market or dealing with a new currency and or clients or supplier could drive the solutions here. And the overall winner of the best foreign exchange solution category is Linda Haywood, Group Treasurer at Tesco. Well done. Hi, I'm Linda Haywood. I'm Group Treasurer at Tesco. It's really fantastic that we've won this award. It's external recognition for the whole team and everyone that's that's worked on it. And that's really great for the team and just for us to have any piece of work having that sort of recognition. For the broader finance team at Tesco, it's really important too. Um, We like to celebrate success and we've recently celebrated across a whole finance event where this award was called out as being one of the highlights of the year. So it's fantastic on both fronts. So just to give a little bit of background about how we came to do this transaction, to do the piece of work that led to the award. In late 2019, uh, we were looking at the disposal of our Asian business. It was a very big disposal of a big part of the business with proceeds of around $11 billion. At the time, we were looking at how to manage uh, the FX risk on that. There was some discussion about actually which currency we would receive the proceeds in, given that the bulk of the business was actually based in Thailand with a, with a Thai bar functional currency. So what we did is we, we engaged with the advisory banks. We had two big banks working on it, um, and we talked to both of them about the best way to come up with a strategy based on the fact that we knew that there would be some competition element of this. And so it was unlikely that we would know straight away whether the deal was going to go ahead. So we came up with this strategy and it was a joint effort between us and our banks. The broader team was was involved, the broader treasury and risk team was involved. And we had to go through various parts of our governance internally to get the strategy approved, Um, the final stage of that being the audit committee and the board. Just to enable us to actually progress with the strategy, we needed some authority. And so what happened was the board, once they had approved, granted authority to myself and our CFO to execute the transaction, which meant that we could be a little bit more nimble and a little bit more reactive in the market, given that it only took a very small movement in the uh, sterling dollar exchange rate to have a really big impact on the level of proceeds that we would uh, receive. So to, to manage the process, we did that internally within the Treasury team and specifically within the risk part of the Treasury team getting through the strategy, executing it over time, right up until the settlement date, which was in the end a lot later than we expected it to be. So we needed to put the first part of the hedge in place on the day we announced the transaction to the market, um, which was actually the 9th of March 2020, which was pretty much the day that the whole world went mad and we went, it, not quite when we went into lockdown, but um, certainly it was probably the most volatile day we could have chosen to try and put in place any sort of hedge. But what we did over time, and and you will all remember how volatile that, well, all currencies were last year, um, but including uh, dollar sterling cable rates. So as things moved over time, we looked at ways to improve the level of hedge. So what our focus was to get the greatest amount of sterling proceeds out of the deal. Um, and so what we did is, as, as and when we could, we took action in the market to improve the hedge we had. 
And the other thing we had to do over time as the clearance we needed to actually go ahead with the transaction took a bit longer than we expected. And so the hedge had to be repositioned to a later date, actually more than once. We had to do that as the date became clear. And I guess the final thing that is that is pertinent to this is that not only did the dates change, but at, over time, the level of certainty we had over whether the deal was actually going to happen changed as the market and the uh, market approvals came through. And so we changed from a sort of contingent hedging strategy then to a more fixed firm um, strategy towards the end of the period. I guess looking back, it was a, a protracted hedge. So we started it, as I said, on the, on the 9th of March. Um, we finally settled the deal on the 18th of December. So throughout that period, we had to have our finger on this hedge and were actively managing it rather than just putting it in place and letting it roll. And I guess just thinking back on what we learned from that whole process, I guess a key one, and, and it's true of many, probably most transactions, is to be really well prepared, to think through the strategy, to think through what can go wrong, as well as what, what can go right and what does, what does a good outcome look like, and just be prepared for every eventuality. I mean, we certainly wouldn't have predicted that we'd have to put the first part of the hedge in place on one of the most volatile days of the, the year and in many of the past years. The other thing is never give up trying to improve, trying to keep your eye on what, what the outcome is. Don't assume you know what's possible without going and looking at what's possible and actually working through it and taking advice from others. And the other thing I'd say is we were also pretty nimble and flexible around what we could do. We had a delegation of authority from the board. We kept them informed through the process, but we had enough scope to look at different solutions and work through them as time and conditions and the nature of the underlying deal evolved over time. So those are the key learnings, I think. We planned well, we kept open minds, and we kept on it when it came to actually delivering the transaction. Next up, the highly competitive award winner in this category. The first is Michael Ben Mosh, Senior Director, Head of Financial Risk and Cash Management, Corporate Treasury at Tiva Pharmaceutical Industries. I'm Michael Ben Moshe, Head of Global Cash, Working Capital and Financial Risk Management at Tiva Pharmaceuticals Global Treasury, the highly commended winner for the best foreign exchange solution. Aside from the honor of being awarded by such a distinguished institution, winning the Adolf Smith Award was important for us to understand that our processes are being validated and stand out among a group of many other global companies, companies who are struggling with the same major challenges as we do. FX is a major risk driving factor in most organizations. In Teva, it is a strategic imperative to protect our financial assets and results from FX fluctuations. The challenge is that FX risk management is a very professional task, which should be managed centrally in order to reduce risk, take advantage of natural hedge, and leverage scale economies. However, in the same time, it requires cross-organizational collaboration, solutions, and processes, which are very hard to put in place, especially when numerous business units are involved. It is not straightforward to manage the risk centrally, but in the same time, ask the wider organization to put processes which they are not directly managing. And this is why I'm proud that as a treasury function, the organization trusts us to orchestrate the financial risk management effort. I believe that winning this award is strengthening the organizational confidence in us and helps us to promote treasury as a process-oriented organization, not only in the FX world, but in some other treasury fields we can generate value. As for the team, this award made us realize we are on the right path with the solutions we were able to put in place for Teva. Honestly, I'm fortunate to lead a group of non conformist people, which happen to be also very dedicated, capable and innovative. And this combination of skills together with their hard work have generated a significant amount of value for Teva. So this honorable recognition motivates us to drive further value and efficiencies in our processes.
Since our portfolio involves a large number of currencies, I would say that risk modeling was the biggest challenge for us, and maybe even more so relying on its results. In addition, the edging program is heavily dependent on forecasting, and requires strong forecasting processes and capabilities, which are crucial for the effectiveness of the edging program, but are hard to find in companies operating in more than 60 countries like Teva. Luckily, and this is a good opportunity to thank them, our corporate and regional FPNN accounting teams demonstrated strong forecasting capabilities. They made it easier for us to rely on our exposure forecast and hedge it. As an anecdote, I always say you can be the greatest trader or risk analyst, but none of this matters when you drive a serious damage relying on false data. Second, once we understood that our forecast is solid, we engaged with quantum risk modeling teams within our banking group. They used advanced statistical tools and models to quantify the risk and suggest a surgical hedging program, which we call in our professional jargon the efficient frontier model. This sophisticated model measures correlations between our more than 50 currencies, isolates the natural hedge component within our portfolio, and identifies the currencies we are truly exposed to. These currencies are not necessarily the currencies with the biggest exposure, which intuitively you would hedge first. Then it suggests the right hedging ratios per currency, based on the risk appetite and the hedging cost we were comfortable with, which we later on transacted in the market using a combination of many hedging instruments. Retrospectively, going into the most volatile year over the last decade, it was a huge success. Our hedging portfolio was effective all along, also under the rapidly changing market conditions in 2020 enabling the company to focus on its business performance rather than FX headwinds. To demonstrate the effectiveness and our ability to pinpoint our hedging to the right risk generators, by hedging only 10 currencies out of the 50 that we are exposed to, with up to 60% of hedge ratio per currency, we are able to offset as much as 90% of the risk on our entire portfolio, and for me, this was a great achievement. The biggest learning point for us was realizing the importance of shaping the DNA of the treasury function to possess the right skill set that will better position treasury towards meeting its goals and mission. The modern treasury function is transforming from being in the past a transactional organization in nature, it is now required to be a strategic partner and sometimes lead cross-organizational processes. This means that treasury should have the right balance in terms of talent and culture to allow it to take responsibility and navigate through unknown territory sometimes, and create a better financial environment for the company, not only with effects, but also elsewhere. As a strut of financial resources and services, sometimes the processes that affect the ability of Treasury to deliver on its mission are not necessarily contained in the Treasury domain. This is why a Treasury function should be versatile. A good Treasury function should have strong data analytic capabilities, which will allow it to identify broken processes, inefficiencies, or just changes in the external or internal environment, but in the same time make sure that it has the right talent which can drive changes, build trust, and steer major cross-organizational processes. If we use hedging, for example, forming a new large-scale FX hedging strategy is extremely difficult, especially for companies working in a multi-geographic environment. To make its hedging process as effective, Treasury should first work internally on building strong processes, organizational discipline and design the right systems, and only then understand the potential solutions out there and how they can fit to the company's needs. Teva's risk management team was at that place when our exposure to FX increased in the last few years and became more strategic to the company. First, we had to realize that, and it is not as easy as it sounds, and then, by taking the lead and demonstrating a series of strong professional capabilities, both in terms of FX market understanding as well as understanding our own business, we were able to put in place and maintain an impressive FX ecosystem for them. And now it's time for a word from their partner. I am Claire Clark, the Senior Sales Manager for Financial Messaging Marketplaces at Finastra. Teva reached out to Finastra when they were looking to build out their FX ecosystem and hedging strategy, as we have over 20 years experience supporting clients who want to reduce their risk window by automating their confirmations processing. As Teva is a SWIFT member, they were able to utilize our SWIFT copy Fusion Confirmation Matching Service, which meant they didn't need to make any changes to their SWIFT message formats or their message processing. 
we were able to rapidly deploy our solution, allowing them to go live within just weeks. Teva were focused on organizing their processes and procedures to support their hedging program. And this increased their need to automate trade confirmations between SWIFT members in real time and to remove operational risk, increase automation and help lead them to efficiencies for their treasury and operations departments. Fusion Confirmation Matching Service helps Teva to enhance straight through processing, which in turn removes the need for manual intervention and therefore significantly reduces errors. Their deals are matched, archived and can be red flagged within minutes of the deals being done. Therefore, deals in error can be corrected before any payment instructions are sent, eliminating the risk of a deal going wrong. During this unprecedented year of the pandemic, our software as a service solution has allowed Teva to continue to use Fusion Confirmation Matching Service uninterrupted, whether they've needed to work at home or been able to make it into the office. Finastra offers their congratulations to Michael and the team at Teva for being recognised as the highly commended winner of the best foreign exchange solution, and huge congrats to them for being the first Israeli company to win this distinguished prize. A huge congratulations to all our Adam Smith Awards 2021 winners. Thank you for listening to this episode of our dedicated Adam Smith Awards podcast series brought to you by the Treasury Today Group. More episodes will be coming soon featuring other award-winning solutions. So please subscribe to our channel so you can stay updated wherever you get your podcasts.